So, the big carp buzz went live on YouTube, and judging by the comments, you know, you've all really loved it. I've seen so much positivity, um, really enjoyed shooting the film, catching lovely fish in a beautiful environment. But one negative that I did see, people said, where's the rig, where's the technical approach? You know, they wanna take something from the film. So, in this short video, I'm just gonna talk you through my spinner rig and why I use what I do. You know, I was fishing across to um, a snaggy tree line. It was not like really snaggy, but I was fishing under the trees in quite shallow water. The bottom was gravel slash mud as you're coming up the marginal sl slope, but I'm having to drill it in there quite hard to get it under the trees and I'm not feeding the lead down. And because of that, I'm fishing a leg core lead like this with the bead. It was about, about six inches up so that, you know, it's, it's guaranteed to present. If there's any twigs under the tree, any stones, any rocks, you know, that shouldn't, you know, using a really stiff hook link, you know, like um, like I am in the hybrid stiff in 20 pounds, you don't want that to end up sort of lodged like that. So hopefully with a pop-up that's overweighted, you know, and with a bead up like that, it should find its spot somewhere clear on the bottom and just come down to rest on the, on the lake bed, on the river bed, should I say. Um, so I'm gonna talk you through why I use what I use and how to do that. So for my boom section, I'm, I'm probably fishing slightly different to some people. You know, a lot of people are using the boom product. I prefer the hybrid stiff. The hybrid stiff is, as far as I'm aware, it's the only coated braid that you can crimp. And crimping is such a neat way to, to, to fish these booms. It's just, it's a beautiful place to put your putty rounds and it's just really, really neat. And another thing that I do that I've not seen many people do is I use a little bit of shrink tube, that's three centimeters of the medium, 2.4, over a size 11 ring swivel. And that just acts like a bit of, um, like an anti-tangle sleeve for a want of a better expression. And it just, just kicks it out lovely. So I'm gonna talk you through exactly how I do that. First of all, you take a piece of 20 pound hybrid. I pre-cut a piece somewhere. Well, I've done with it, there it is. Pre-cut myself a piece. Go through the double barrel crimp. It's a small crimp, so the 0.6 mil. Go through that first one way. Find your size 11 ring swivel. Thread it through the reverse side of the other, the other barrel of the crimp. Just leave yourself a little tag end, you know, not long, just like a couple of mil like that, and pull on the, on the main length until it's right up against the swivel, up against that size 11 ring swivel like that. And one thing Danny showed me, puts it into the there's two different size grooves on the um, on the crimping pliers, and I've definitely found after after his advice, crimp the small ones in the large in the larger groove. It just so much. It just one firm press like that, and it's just ultra neat, and they seem to just go down ever so neatly like that. I don't know how well you can see that on there, but that is so 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 neat. And like I say, I've got a three centimeter piece of medium shrink tube. Put that over the end, pull that down and go over the crimp, over the eye of the swivel and onto the barrel, like so. And then it's just a case of going through your second crimp, like so. Spinner swivel without the ring, so standard spinner swivel, not a spinner ring swivel. And go back through the other side of the crimp and leave yourself a loop. I like a small loop, like, and again, I don't know how well you can see that, but about that sort of size, really small little loop like that. Put it into the, the big grooves on the jaws again, on the pliers, and one firm crimp, like so. I haven't measured that one for the purposes of the, the uh, speed on this thing, but I'm always looking for exactly six inches, which is, when I say six inches, I've got six inches from the left-hand side here on the pivot point to the pivot point there. So exactly six inches like so. And once that's on your leg core leader, you know, really easy to put on, take that, that split bead off like so. That would stay indefinitely on the leader like so while it's on your rod. Put the bead back on, split bead. So that is that is your rig. And all at that point, once you've got something like that on your rod, you've only got to change the hook, which, you know, when you're catching quite a few fish like we were on the river in Germany, you know, it's, it's just really efficient and a quick way 
and a, a quick and great way to fish. Talking about hooks in particular, I was using size four wide gape hex. You know, you probably wouldn't have any bother with a normal wide gape four, but you know, I'm fishing for real wild fishing in a wild environment and two snags, you know, so I can't see any, any reason not to use the wide gape hexes, so I do. And what I do, I pre-make my hook sections, or say the hook pieces, and I put them into a little box like this. So I've got the bead, the hook bead is already on there, the, um, the hook swivel is already on there, and the large kicker is already on there as well. So take that out of there, you can have, you can have as many of them ready as you want. A simple case of taking the floss, going through the eye on the little hook swivel, ultra easy like that. Got a pop up weight in here already on the needle. Pop that on there like that and pull the swivel, pull the swivel just into the bait like that. Not all the way, just so the barrel is inside the bait. And at that point, he looks for a pair of scissors. Trim off yourself a little tag, leave about 10 mil, take the lighter to it like so, and just use the lighter to smear it over. And that, that's, that is not coming off of there. And then it's a really easy thing just to take your spinner swivel, pop it on there, and slide it down over the, over the swivel. Make sure that you, the kicker has got an inbuilt angle in it. Make sure you're using that angle in the correct way so that the swivel, uh, the, sort of the, hook, the hook is kicked over. You want that bead, I like the bead position. I like it sort of on the bend, sort of almost in the middle of the bend like so. Bait sits against it like that. And hang on, I've got that kicker on a bit twisted, like I said. Get that on nice and straight, like so. It should sit like that. When that's on the bottom, that fish cannot see that hook. You know, that is literally, the fish come down, only see the pop up. And with a hook link that short, as the fish sucks that in, that is so far, so efficient. And it's just a rig that's caught me loads of fish, catching loads, but loads of people are using spinner rigs, loads of people are catching on it. It's a great rig that will continue to catch because it's really effective and it's certainly worked for me in Germany.